Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University and welcome to another weekly study. Today, we're gonna to go over a couple of practice test questions and why are we doing this? Because as I continue to go through the Facebook group, what I notice more than anything, of course, are, are the questions about study tips and um, the uh, students are responding, very helpful. We can see that I uh, notice there's lots of questions. What did you do for this? What did you do for this? And we get some great responses and um, pretty much it's the sort of the entire spectrum of study techniques that folks are throwing out there. So we, we really appreciate the feedback that, that all you students that have either taken and passed the exam or those of you students that um, are in the process and willing to sort of uh, reach out and, and help those students that are asking these questions if you have specific targeted questions, throw them in there. Of course, that's one of the reasons why we do this weekly study is to help you on specific questions. But in this case, it's more of a broad general um, assistance that I'm trying to, trying to cover for you, which is practice exam questions. And of course, um, what we see a lot, hear a lot, um, is that students are always wondering what's the best practice exam well there are no best practice exams the goal of a practice exam is to help you get the feel of the environmental conditions 120 questions two hour test then you get the feel for it and then on the on the more study component side of it looking at the actual questions that you got wrong so look it's really simple i'm going to give you real world um, specifics and tips you take practice exams so you can look at the questions you got wrong and that takes you back into your study materials. You still have to do the same thing. You still got to read, write, and recite. You still got to listen. You still got to study. Um, pen, pencil, highlighters, remember colored, colored uh, highlight, things like that uh, are great to rewrite and recite, right? But as far as rewriting goes, use it, get back into your textbook. Practice exams, at the end of the day, what a practice exam does is allows you to target study those areas that you don't know. If you don't know the material, you're going to get the question wrong. By the way, the other thing about a practice exam is that if you guess and you get it correct, no, no, no. Put that question on your list because you might not guess it right the next time you do it, or you might not guess that material correctly on the actual test. So it's when you don't know the answer to a question, even if you even if you by chance got it correct. If you did not know that question, if you did not know the real answer to that question, that goes on your list of questions that you're going to target study and go back into your textbook, okay? Back into the textbook to study. Now, what I did for you today is I went into um, chapter one and basically in chapter one, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this right from the beginning for you. Um, I went into chapter one and I found a couple of questions on some practice exams. So look, BDU, Bodies on University, we have three main practice exams, 120 questions each. That's 360 questions. Please, please, please don't expect to see any of those questions on the NASM exam, on the actual exam. Um, that should not be an expectation. Okay. NASM asks questions. They have thousands and thousands thousands of questions in their data bank of questions to ask from this textbook. The practice exam questions, um, they're not going to look like that. And if they do, well, good, then, then you have a, you know, an upper hand on that part of it. But don't expect that. It's knowing the material. Look at these three questions that I brought up here. Now, these are all from chapter one. And I just wanted to show, show kind of give you an idea, show it to you from this perspective. This is how I do it. First thing I normally do when I take a practice um, practice exam or test is I go through it. And then once I look at the, the questions that I, that I got wrong, I'm now going to look at the correct answer. I'm going to go back into the materials, but there's another way that you can actually use practice exams. And that is, is if you're able to get the questions without the multiple choice responses, not, you can't always do that, but if you can, um, my recommendation is that you would print them out, for instance, and just run, you want to know what your knowledge base is. That's one of the things that I do. If I can get test questions without the multiple choice component to them, I'm going to do that first. I want to see where my knowledge base is. If I already know the following injuries, pain in the bottom of the heel, and I can write that down, I already know it. 
I'm not going to study that material. Okay. You get the idea you're targeted studying. So that's why I did this. I put up three questions and these are, um, you might've seen these, by the way, if you have seen these, literally these actual questions, not a problem. Um, the point is not to answer these questions correctly. The, the idea is to understand uh, the methodology. So the first thing I do is I say, which of the following injuries is characterized by sharp pain in the bottom of the, let me ask you a question. Do you know the answer to that question? Right? Just think about it for a second. Does anybody out there know the answer to that question? Okay. Some of you are watching this video and you're saying, yeah, yeah, I know what it is. It's blah. Some of you are looking going, I have no idea. Oh, well, that's great because those of you that say, oh yeah, I know what the answer is already. Good for you. Okay. That's one area that you don't need to target study. Okay. What about the second one? What group of hormones released by the brain during exercise help reduce pain? Who knows the answer to that? If you know the answer, congratulations. Don't spend a whole lot of time on hormones or whatever. You don't need to target, you need to target study the ones that you got wrong. Does that, I hope that makes sense. If you don't know it, you're going to need to go into chapter one because that's where this question came from. Third question, according to the NASM Code of Professional Conduct, blah, blah. How many of you all know the answer to that, right? Is it, does anybody know? One year, is it five years? Is it 10? Is it 20? Is it six months, two months? What is it? If you've seen the question and you've already gone and used Quizlet or whatever, then you already know what the answer is. Good. That's great. The goal is to know as much, obviously, as you can about uh, the textbook and the material in it. But if you don't know it, that's the beauty of this. Now you go and you take that and you're going to look for that in the book itself, the textbook, and you're going to target study it. And you're going to pick up your happy little pen and you're going to read it. And you're going to rewrite it so that now when you finished with this practice exam of 120 questions, you're going to have gone through all of those questions you got wrong. That's the key. So let's do it this way now. So that's what, by the way, that's one way I do it. That gives me, that gives me a, a good indicator of my knowledge base. I know that I, you know, out of the 10 questions, 20 questions, I got five of them. I, I knew five of them without even thinking about it. That's pretty good. I won't have to study those areas, but let's look at them one at a time. So this is that first question. Now, if you didn't know this, what I'm going to do is put up the pen so I can actually write on this. So let's look at the first one. How do we do this? Which of the following injuries is characterized by a sharp pain in the bottom of the heel that makes it difficult to walk? Some of you, by the way, remember multiple choice questions. Where is the answer? It, don't worry. It's not up here. The answer, the answer is here the answer is literally in front of your face. That's the beauty of multiple choice. You don't need to know the answer. You just need to pick the right answer. Sometimes that's a little difficult to, to um, process. These They don't want you to know the right answer. They just want you to pick the correct answer, which is why sometimes you can pass a test without even knowing what the information was. You just got lucky, right? Um, you picked the right answer. Uh, so out of all four of these, a couple of them just don't make any sense, okay? If you've read through the material and if you can, look, if you can kick off any one of them, if you can kind of knock off the ACL because that's at the knee, maybe you already know that's at the knee. By the way, what is the patella? It's at the knee. Okay, well, this is talking about the heel. Well, you're left with two, okay? And so the idea is that if you didn't get this one correct, just as a, for instance, um, even if you don't know what the correct answer is, you could immediately go into chapter, this is in chapter one, by the way, in NASM, and I'll just show you, literally, this is what I do. I go in and I go, okay, let me see. I'm looking for following injuries, foot and ankle dysfunction. I'm on page 16. Foot and ankle, dysfun foot and ankle injuries can severely limit, blah, blah, blah. An ankle sprain occurs, okay. So, oh, look at that, sprains and plantar fasciitis, okay? And I read through it, um, and there it is. There's the sentence, plantar fasciitis involves inflammation of the tissue on the bottom of the foot. Hmm. Now, what do I do? Okay, folks, look, this is it. This, this is the, you wanna call it a trick? It's more of a tip? 
Now I go right to that because I got this question wrong. That's where I'm going to spend a little bit of time. They've bolded it for you. And I'm going to write plantar fasciitis. And I'm going to write this down. Sharp pain, bottom of heel, difficult to walk. And I'm going to rewrite that over and over and over. And I'm going to tell you, like with anything else from the study perspective, once you write it, re, uh, read it, rewrite it on a piece of paper and do that over and over, you're going to be dreaming about it. You can't even forget it. So the answer, of course, is plantar fasciitis. Um, that's the point. That's why I'm going through this with you. A couple of these questions, you know, these three questions, the idea is just to kind of show you the physicality of exactly what I would do if I were you doing this. So if you knew the answer, move on. Fantastic. Good for you. How about this one? What group of hormones uh, released by the brain during exercise helps reduce pain? Some of you already know. And if you already know, congratulations. Okay. But if I didn't get it correct, uh, or I didn't know the answer, but I picked the correct answer just by whatever, just by mistake, I still need to go back. Because there's a part in chapter one that speaks to uh, this question, right? And you're going to read through it. And then you're going to know, what do I need to know? Well, endorphins. You're going to write it down. What do endorphins do? They are they're pain uh, remediators. They reduce pain. And that's what, when you're exercising, that's what they do. Oh, endorphins. Yeah, don't stop there and read it and look at it. Write it, right? Endorphins reduce pain released by the brain during exercise. Don't stop there. It'd be a good idea to know what an androgen is. So the next time you don't get tripped up, what's an androgen? It's like testosterone, right? Androgens, andro, male. Right. So they have an they have an effect on protein synthesis, yada, yada. It's in there. Just write it down. Androgens, ooh, testosterone. What about adrenaline? Well, adrenaline is not released in the brain. Adrenaline is released where? Adrenal cortex, the top of the kidneys. Right. What do they do? Releases uh, free fatty acids or uses free fatty acids. I mean, there's a lot that adrenaline does ultimately provides um, energy, right? Uh, increases metabolic activity at the cellular level. What is melatonin? It's a good idea to know these things because you won't get tripped up. If they ask another question, it's not going to be exactly like this. More than likely, they're going to ask you another question. What is the, what is the um, hormone or group of hormones, right? And by the way, just so you know, it said group. That was a, that was a dead giveaway. Each one of these is an individual hormone. Well, androgens is a is technically a group, but endorphins and androgens, you had one of you had a 50-50 chance. The point is, is what's melatonin? Well, it's a it is a hormone, right? Um, that is produced. Okay, it is the pituitary, right? But the point is, is that you would go and you would write it, rewrite it, and then you would know it. Okay. Second question. Third question. According to uh, Code of Professional Conduct, again, that's chapter one. That's where you would be going. I didn't get it correct. Well, that's not a problem. Um, how long? It says, lit it tells you right in there. It's four years. Let's just say you look and say, damn, I don't remember that. Well, now you know four years. And what would you do? You would. Let me get the pen on here again. What would you do? You just write it down. The way I would do it is, uh, according to Code of Con, long, how long maintain records? Maintain records for four years. Maintain records for four years. So it doesn't matter how they ask the question. You get the idea? They may, I mean, I guess they may ask the question exactly like that. Well, then it's easy. But if they don't ask the question exactly like that, you still know because you wrote it over and over and over that it's four years, not six years, not six months, not three months, not indefinitely. It's four years. Now, look, this is from chapter one, and that's just three questions. The goal is not to help you to memorize practice test questions. That's not what we're doing. Um, go through as many of the test questions as you can, but the beauty of the practice test and the test questions is now they give you the ability to efficiently study after you've gone through all your studying and I know you're freaking out, you do the practice test and now, you know, I don't know anything from chapter three. D don't worry. Don't worry. You knew everything from chapter one. You got all those answers, correct? Chapter eight, chapter 16, whatever the case is, it gives you the opportunity to target 
focus your studying. And that's the beauty of the practice exams. If you have any questions on what I just went over, you got to let me know. Please let me know. Be specific in your questions. Got to get you to pass this. We really want to help you pass this on your first attempt. And if you didn't pass it on the first attempt, then for sure to nail it on the second attempt. That's what we're here to help you with. Please let us know if you have any questions, post them right into the, right into the group. Remember, Corey and I also do a um, Q&A on uh, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can come on live with us or you can send in a question and we'll, we'll answer it. Um, we try to do uh, questions and answers related to actual real world stuff. But if you have questions related to the material, we're more than happy to talk to you. But I would much rather you put those right here in the group so we can hit uh, specifically this information and help you get through that exam. So it's a pleasure um, uh, going over this study with you and we will see you next week. Thanks. Have a great weekend.